morning it's seven o'clock right now we are here still in San Pedro Sula in Honduras and we're gonna go in one day all the way to the south of Honduras to Chuloteca it's gonna see if I'm gonna get there if not I'm just gonna stop in the capital of Honduras which is Tegucigalpa <laughs> funny name right <laughs> anyway it is about 388 kilometers, which is pretty far, but I think I will make this bringing me pretty close already to the Nicaraguan border so that tomorrow I can really hitchhike during the morning and the early afternoon, which are of course the safest and best hours to be hitchhiking. I've been doing a lot of research lately on Nicaragua and it should be fine if you evade the hotspots. I'm also communicating with a local guy from there uh, via, via Couchsurfing and he actually told me that his area, his region is very okay during the day. A little bit hostile during the night but that's the same in all of these countries. Uh, but during the day everything should be fine and I'm really happy that I have contact with a local guy um, who should help me out getting there. So let's go over here. officially out of the hostel into the hitchhiking adventure. Now Honduras itself has been amazing for me so far. I'm really curious to see how things are gonna turn out today. It's a large day but from what I've seen Honduran people are super friendly and take you super easy. Uh, there is apparently some protests because people aren't getting well enough paid for transport. Um, but I think that might even help because people will think, okay, it's not easy for this guy to get transport, so I will take him. The protests are very calm and peaceful though, so no worries. So basically, I just need to hike into the city first to get closer to a place where I can hitchhike. but he's actually going all the way to Chuloteca where I want to be so I guess I'm lucky today <laughs> it's beautiful over here with heaps of hills heaps of green and in general the countryside in Honduras seems amazing also apparently there's quite a lot of road stuff because of the protests I was talking about before and I am curious to see whether we're gonna get stopped and how far we get uh, but apparently at midnight they should stop so we should be able to get by but apparently Tegucigalpa and even Chulateca are completely closed like they're blocking the roads completely um, so we'll see how far we get anyway very lucky today to get a ride that is going all the way to Tegucigalpa or Chulateca and we'll see how we go let's enjoy the ride over here Claro, porque tú tienes que ponerte pensando. ¿Te consideras que fue de manera legal? Claro, claro que. ¿Ah? Ahí me dijeron. Pero no izquierda. Oh, a los policías. Entonces al día siguiente era súper divertido porque. Just made a little stop to get a little bit of food, drink, and we're gonna try the chicharrones. I've had chicharrones before in Mexico, but we don't know whether they're the same over here. Every country has its unique style, definitely in terms of food. So let's try more food. I love food. Yes, good morning. Good morning. These are chicharrones. So it 
it's like pork meat and they fry it. In Mexico they do it as well, but I think it's pork skin. It's a very different this. We just passed by one of the first stops, but here they're only uh, blocking public transport. Because it is a strike of public transport, they just don't allow taxis and buses to go through. But we were able to get through without any problems. There is heaps of police present though, uh, well armed. The citizens are exercising their right to protest, so it's okay. But the police has to be there for security reasons, make, making sure that they don't damage any property. Pretty safe to pass through here, no problems, but it is good to see these protests. The protests, by the way, are because of um, the prices of gasoline being very high and they want it to be lowered because there's high tide taxes on the, on the gasoline and they want it to be lowered because they simply cannot take the costs anymore and that's why they're protesting uh, throughout the whole country in the rivers here. Okay, anyway, ride is very nice, we bought some fresh cheese. Let's drink a little. The countryside here in Honduras is amazing. These mountains, pine trees everywhere. Uh, it's so beautiful. Like this ride towards the Quetzalcoatl is absolutely stunning. So definitely enjoy the view. What happened here? This doesn't look good. Turistas. <laughs> Ooh, ah, shit. Anybody? Final destination? Look similar? I don't know. <laughs> Passing by another roadblock over here, as you can see, the trucks are stopped. And Lisa and see, and the police, and the police over here as well. Heavy armed police here, oh, everywhere again, but everything seems to be peaceful. We can only get into the city uh, from a certain point. There's various other roads that have been blocked uh, because of protests, so we're only able to get into the city uh, having a little detour, not really having a straight road into Tegucigalpa. Um, so it's interesting uh, to see how these protests go. Everything seems to be Okay, I mean, it's peaceful, it's not that there's any fighting or shooting so far, I think. Um, but there is some protest, and which is preventing us from getting into the city easily. That's okay. As I said, we had to take some back roads over here, as you can see. <laughs> It's not really the normal way of entering Tegucigalpa, but it's definitely a scenic ride, I would say. Uh, entering the neighborhoods over here. Let's go see here. There you go. We just came out of these neighborhoods like literally two seconds ago, and just like wham, you see a big shopping mall over here. Like the difference between rich and poor is like extremely hard over here in Honduras. It was in San Pedro Sula that way as well, but driving here to the Gucialpa, I see the same thing. Like you see, like a pretty poor part over here. You see, like trash and everything. Everybody walking on the streets. They're burning the stuff over here. Damn. And then right next after that wall, you will see a massive fancy shopping mall. So. The difference is massive here in Honduras. We saw how they were burning everything on the street because of the protests. In general, on the streets, you can see that people are against it, but except for just some fire on the streets, everything seems to be pretty okay. And we're gonna meet up with a friend of Giovanni here to get some, get some food. Here it seems a little bit blocked. I'm gonna have to look what we can do over here some real back roads over here to get by and pass these roadblocks. 
So the protest is very real though. The whole city's traffic is really upside down. So we're trying to Google our way out of the situation. Googling your way out of things is never a bad idea. Continue on one second. We'll see you where we get. <laughs> we just had another roadblock, so we have to make another detour. Uh, but we're getting there. Google is helping us out a bit, and of course, yeah, he knows the city, so uh, we should be fine. Um, but uh, definitely, protest is real. <laughs> there is a lot of roadblocks everywhere. But in general, people just are going on their life as, as well as they can. So here they're blocking the whole road again. Okay, we finally found some parking and we got where we need to be. Yee-hoo! Through all the busy traffic with the protests, but uh, we find it and we're gonna get some food over here in Tegucialpa. And uh, maybe later go to Chulapeca, we'll see how the protest is going. So, um, we just arrived at a friend's of Giovanni here, um, who lives in Tegucialpa and we're gonna have some lunch over here. It's so fun! to meet like the local people over here and they take you to their homes. This guy has a massive screen over here. <laughs> to, uh, we might play some FIFA later on before we go to Chulateca. <laughs> the protests are very real though. In, uh, in Honduras we pass by various roadblocks. Definitely here in the city it's, it's crazy. The traffic really has to find its way to everywhere. They lit up various like tires in the street to make like fires so people can't pass. So it seems a bit like a riot, although it's very busy and very, although it's very busy and everything, it is, people are still calm and friendly, they just go on with their lives, they only have to find different roads, so it's a bit more hectic in the streets, but people are used to a bit of a hectic lifestyle over here, so um, in general it's very, very calm. Anyway, <laughs> fun to get like in a cool local home here. By the way, I am so lucky the last days. I don't know how or why. Second ride with an awesome guy, Giovanni, and I was still quite close to San Pedro. And I just got a ride straight to Chuloteca. Guy that lives in Chuloteca, exactly where I wanted to be. It's like still four or five hours from that place where I was. And I don't know, he has a friend over here. We can lunch over here. He already bought me some the chicharrones that you saw before. And these are the things that get so much energy from it. Just amazing hitchhiking. Ah, I don't know, I love these stories. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna shut up again. I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna shut up. It's been good. Okay, bye bye. Poco de comida chinese, Chinese food. Let's see. Come on. For my house, solo neerlandés. Sí, poco de chinese. Sí. Todo está divino, hermoso. ¿Cuál es? ¿Qué, qué caro es? Eh, ¿Es el, la Holanda que está en la parte? Ah, sí, 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 claro. Sí, me lo traje de gran pasante. <risa> we just got a game a little bit here while we're waiting. Guess what we're playing? Rocket League. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna fail too hard over here. We'll see. I've played this before with friends, but... Yeah, it's a cool game, though. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah! Oh! Hey, 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 hey! Easy, no? Yeah, también, vamos ahí. Le vamos. Oh, cumpleaños, mi perrito. Ah, vamos a ver. Doble. Apparently, there's a massive roadblock um, toward Chulateca. Chulateca is completely blocked. So we don't know whether we will be able to get there today. Uh, but these guys are so friendly, they invited me to, uh, to stay with them. We're gonna have some beers tonight, so we're just gonna play some games, there's more friends coming. So crazy day over here. Uh, right now we're heading into the city because this guy has to get back his driver's license. And basically then we're gonna head back and chill out, have some beers. Basically, I don't know if you can see it, it's very zoomed in, this is my phone. The police are basically going against the protesters to clear this road because they're not allowed to block this road. No están permitido. So basically they're just trying to get traffic going, but see everybody stopping there and watching. The police are grouped there. And I don't know if you can see it, it's very, very choppy. So we're back in the house of the friend of Giovanni. We did saw another protest on the street. It was getting a little heavier. The riot police, like fully armed up with shields and bats, 
were basically trying to remove the people from the street to get the traffic flow going again. I didn't really see any real violence, more pushing them to really get out of the way, but it seemed pretty okay to me. Anyway, we also had some conversations in the car about corruption in general here in Honduras, and it is pretty bad in terms of corruption here. They have a president that has been re-elected, but he re-elected himself by force because the Honduran institution says that a president cannot be re-elected and he is the first one to actually say by the army and forcefully allow people to re-elect him. He then falsified all the, falsified all the votes and re-elected him himself. People protested massively for that here in Honduras, and but he just re-elected himself and never already been with his president for two years, so as of today they're still here with a totally corrupt president that everybody knows about, like everybody knows that he's corrupt. That's just a general thing of Central America, like there's a lot of corruption like in all these places. Mexico might change now a bit after the presidential elections, where Andres Manuel was elected. But in general, there's so much corruption, like everybody's perfectly aware of this. And they just go on with their lives, like they're like, we protest so much, but people just, or people get killed, or we're not hurt, and nothing happens. The problem is that the government is always very tied up with the military, and the military has all the force, of course, so they can just, if they just don't get anything that they want, they just take it by force. And basically, it's just a small group of power and money hungry people, individuals, that are taking over this country and just keeping all the money for themselves. They also create heaps of like ghost projects where they for example will set up various pharmaceutical companies and they send a massive amount of medication to hospitals but it turned out after a year that all of these tablets were just flour. They just had a massive medical scandal where they turned all medications that were created by these so-called new pharmaceutical companies were just flower tablets. They said they used about 350 million dollars to set up these pharmaceutical companies. And basically they just, all these politicians just ran away with the money. So they have massive villas, they go to the vacations the whole time, they're super rich. Uh, they, all the people that work for the government have like massively good cars. All the people that work for the government have like a massively good car, a really good wage and they don't have any degrees often, they are just part of the government. So really government is a massive issue over here in Honduras and I hope something will be done about that. I wish I could do something myself right now but other than just go on the street here with these people there's not much you can do. I guess I just sometimes want to talk about these corruption things as well because they do really drive me crazy like how corrupt people can be and it's just a couple of people that just want everything for themselves being very egoistic and leaving masses of people very poor on the street like fighting every day to have a better life and it's just very unjust in my opinion and I really hope that change will happen and in some way maybe be able to do something about that as well. However, it's awesome over here. The people in Honduras are super friendly still. People over here are amazing though. Honduran people are so friendly. Even though there's a lot of problems, I'm having heaps of fun over here with these two guys, for example. All the guys in the street as well. Very friendly, always helping. I've been hitchhiking here super fast, so... I'm talking a lot of shit right now here, but this country is totally amazing. It's actually for its people that I hope that things will get better as well. Anyway, let's be positive as well and still have some fun over here with these guys. So I just needed to fill out some official documents uh, to actually get into Nicaragua. These guys helped me out with uh, getting these documents. Normally there shouldn't be any problems if you're like a tourist from Europe. Um, but it's better to fill them out in general. Here they are. Just filling out these. Okay, so just out for some shopping with all of these guys. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Si, esto es en un video de mi viaje. Yeah, sí, yeah. Uh, eso no, eso no, eso. 
Essa é da Vivo. Da Vivo. Essa ou não? Ah, enjoy some Ruby Dream vibes, bom, sunset. Bom, bom, bom. We're probably gonna stay here because the Roblox is gonna stay. Do some We're... shopping. Yeah. We're just passing by the supermarket over here with these snacks. Ah, un intento de hacerlo bueno. <laughs> we just went to the supermarket and now we're gonna get some local foods. Okay, we just want to get some extrema bale baleadas, uh, which are typical foods from Honduras. Honduras. And I'm very curious to try these out. Yeah, and this one is also very important, of course. El Imperial, local beer from Honduras. Let's eat. How do you stop this? Stuff is amazing. It's also very big though. <laughs> but uh, I'm just gonna finish it up and then I definitely will be satisfied for today. It is super tasty though. I'm full. <laughs> I'm really totally full. Anyway, we're gonna enjoy this evening. There's some more friends even coming. There's one guy even coming all the way from Belize where I was. And we're gonna enjoy some of this Imperial, the local beer, play some games. <laughs> Now we're playing FIFA, earlier we were playing Rocket League. Anyway, this day has been crazy so far. I was just planning to hitchhike and then I ended up here with these awesome Honduran guys. And we're gonna see where the night's gonna take us. We aren't able to get to Choluteca take up a day because it's still blocked. The whole city is still blocked because of protests. So we'll be going tomorrow morning. But anyway, let's have some fun, have some games, some talks. It's a good beer. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> pija. Me vale pija. Mera pija. Estoy a pija. Pija pija. Dale pija. Pija. No sé la pija. pija. A toda pija. A toda pija. So we're learning some uh, Honduran slang. And basically, pija is like a, a word that they use for heaps of things. And he wrote me all expressions with pija. And let's just go through a couple over here. So just la pija means something like really bad, like a really bad person. Like I don't know. La pija is lazy. Lazy, okay. And then la mera pija is something that went very well. Then you have also por la requinta pija is something that is super far. Um, a toda pija, which is going very fast. Um, dale pija is give someone a hit or a punch. Um, what else? Ah, andar pija. Andar a pija. pija. Andar a pija is being very drunk. So pija for everything. <laughs> I could keep on going, going on for a while. These guys keep coming up with new expressions, uh, expressions. Uh, so. Pretty interesting. I would always love to learn some local slang, so I'm definitely gonna take this one home. There's a couple of more friends that just arrived. Well, one of them brought a puppy pit bull. He has a dog for like two months. <laughs> or like one month. I don't know how old she is. Look at her. <laughs> Looks super cute. He's a little tired, I think. Huh? You tired? <laughs> Fun party over here though. Anyway, today was amazing. I think it's a beautiful example of how hitchhiking 
can allow for some magical days if you just let them pick them. I mean, also thanks to these guys, I was able to get past part of these protests, part of these roadblocks, because they know the local ways, they know the local roads, they have local connections, and basically they just help you out. So, beautiful day today, very adventurous, awesome day with these guys over here that I met during here childhood. And super cool as well. I mean, they've been paying everything for me. I didn't want them to, but they just insisted, like, I oh, know you're a guest, um, you don't have to pay anything. And they're letting me stay as well in this room, good room over here. So, all in all, just an amazing day. Anyway, my little buddy over here wants to go to sleep, I think. So, that will be it for me today. I'm out. <laughs>